Welcome to my review of Ember Swar, an upcoming MMORPG that promises to deliver an immersive fantasy world with engaging gameplay. In this review, we will cover the game's storyline, mechanics, graphics, audio, multiplayer, customization, progression system, and at the end, my overall impression. Whether you are a seasoned MMO player or new to online games, this review will help you decide if Ember Swar is worth your time and commitment. Let's start with the storyline. Ember Swords narrative is packed with twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. From the moment you start playing, you are immersed in a world that's teeming with secrets, ancient lore and hidden dangers. You will meet a cast of fascinating characters, each with their own motivations and agendas, and embark on quests that will take you on a journey through the game's various regions. Speaking of regions, the game's world building is absolutely stunning, from the lush forests to the sprawling cities. Each region feels distinct and alive, with its own unique landmarks and cultures. You will explore seven different regions in total, each with its own challenges and rewards. Whether you are battling bandits in the grasslands or delving deep into the wells of the forest, you will always feel like there's something new to discover. So let's explore every nook and cranny of this magical realm. Our journey begins in the forest, where we hone our combat skills and face off against our very first boss, Pool. But that's just the beginning. We will also visit a settlement and a town for the first time. Moving south, we arrive in the grasslands, where we must confront Martis Gulkador, the second boss, while also dealing with pesky bandits. The millwood lies between the forest and the grasslands, and although we didn't spend too much time here, it's still a beautiful area with new stylish additions. As we venture to the right of the forest, we reach the capital, where we meet Brashi, and embark to a global quest to complete all quests in Solarwood. We managed to complete 4 of 6 quests, which it's not really so bad. Heading north of the forest, we enter the deep forest, a wild place with plenty of vegetation and towering trees. Here we help Trans defeat Steel Slice, the third boss. To the right of the capital and above the millwood, we discover the Autumn Forest, where we complete a few quests and explore the only town in the area. Could there be ruins of an ancient civilization lurking nearby? Who knows? Finally, we arrive at the mountains, a completely new area we haven't seen before in the pre-alpha. This vast region boasts two cities, one town and a whole new questline for crafting. The anticipation was palpable as players eagerly awaited the arrival of Ember Swords combat feature. After all, in the pre-alpha version, all we could do was explore and craft. However, in the alpha, the long-awaited combat feature finally made its debut, and we were finally able to unleash their skills and defeat enemies. With the inclusion of three new combat skills that had never been seen before, the melee combat styles with the sword and shield and the sensor, and branched styles with the pistols and the staff. The combat system in Ember Sword certainly did not disappoint. Players could choose from a variety of weapons each with its own unique set of skills and animations. The sword and shield combo in particular was an absolute delight, with its fluid animations and the ability to combine different skills for maximum impact, from the powerful shield attack that stunned enemies to the exhilarating whirlwind that allowed players to spin and attack all surrounding enemies at once, the skills on offer were a blast to use. The aerial attack skill was a visual spectacle, and even the stampede skill though not as impressive, still pack a punch. The pistols, while not as exciting as the sword and shield, still offer players an easy to use weapon for quick leveling up. The sprint skill came in handy for speedy getaways, and the target skills allowed players to deal a lot of damage to individual enemies. The area effect skill, meanwhile, was ideal for taking out a group of enemies at once. While I wasn't able to try the sensor and magic stuff in detail, I could battle against mages using my pistols and I have to confess that it was a quite challenging. The mages could teleport and disappear in a blink of an eye and then unleash a laser beam that could decimate players. And that's what happened to me. Though the pistols may not be the ideal weapon of choice in such a situation, 
the magic staff may be the perfect solution to take down such formidable foes. With the combat feature now a part of the game, Ambassador has certainly upped this game, offering players a whole new level of assignment and adventure. The gathering and mining systems were similarly to the pre-alpha but with some notable improvements. As you gather vegetables, cut trees and mine ores, you will level up your specific skill, unlocking higher tier resources as you progress. With various plants, trees and veins, requiring different levels of each skill, you will have to use your wits to unlock the higher levels, allowing you to access rare and valuable resources Take your time to explore the map and hone your skills, as you never know that treasures might be hidden just around the corner. Crafting in Embosaur has taken a significant leap forward from the pre-alpha, introducing a plethora of new skills and mechanics for players to explore. One of the most noteworthy features is the updated crafting UI, which adds a layer of complexity to the system. Now, each crafting type has its own specific tier, making it easier to find and access the right tools for the job. Need to craft a weapon? Head to the dedicated weapon crafting table. Want to make armor? Seek out to the armor crafting station. With this new approach, players will have a more immersive and intuitive experience crafting their gear and exploring the depths of Ambassador. The visual journey through Ambassador's game wall is a feast for the eyes, with its polished and stylized graphics that have been lovely crafted with great attention to detail. The developers have truly outdone themselves with the improved lighting system, which gives a more immersive and natural feel to each region you explore. From the sand drenched millwet with its golden wet fields, to the deep and dark deepest forest where light struggles to penetrate through the thick foliage. As a fan of pixelated and stylized art styles, I was blown away by how amazing Ambrosaur looks. The team has invested countless hours into perfecting every aspect of the game design, from the smallest detail on a building to the grandest of landscapes. It's clear to see the passion and love that the team has poured into the game, and I can't recommend it enough. I urge you to join the official Discord server and immerse yourself in the community. You will get exclusive insights into the game's development, behind the scenes, sneak peeks, and surprises that will leave you wanting more. Exploring the vast lands of Embassur was a breathtaking experience, even in its earliest stages of development. While the terrain itself might seem familiar, with its abundance of resources, enemies and winding pathways, what truly captivated me were the settlements that dotted the, the landscape. Each of these settlements boasted a distinct type of building, and upon entering, I discovered a plethora of crafting options at my disposal. But the real excitement came when I finally reached the bustling towns and cities of Embesworth. The level of detail and intricacy in these urban centers is simply awe-inspiring, and I cannot wait to see how they will evolve as the game progresses. I have to say that the audio aspect of the game still has some room for improvement. It seems like the developers are saving this aspect of the game for the final stages of the development, as it's almost non-existing at this point. While some sound effects can be here when performing actions such as gathering resources and fighting enemies, they can be a bit grating and lack the sense of distance. I find myself hearing another player fighting in the distance as if they were right next to me. See items dropped by other. Oh! Weapon Sword level up! I mean... As an avid lover of background music in games, I was disappointed to find that there was none to be here. Although I understand that it's too early in development to add music. The multiplayer experience in the alpha version of this game was a delightfully smooth one. The developers have done a great job improving the game's performance, allowing multiple players to stay in the same area of the map without suffering any annoying lags. They even limited access to the developers and put them in a queue, which has helped maintain the game's stability. It's worth mentioning that during the pre-alpha phase, the multiplayer experience was a nightmare, but as expected, this is not the time to blame the game for issues that arise during the early testing phases. Although there is currently no feature to form parties or groups to complete quests or defeat bosses together, 
it felt great to be able to join all the players and fight the boss all together. This is just the beginning and I'm excited to see the moment when we can start teaming up to tackle even greater challenges. In the alpha, PvP is already available and I was able to try it out a few times. Although the specifics of how this feature will be implemented in the future are still unclear, it was a thrilling experience to participate in PvP in the designated battle arenas, where players can fight against each other and earn points with each kill for the quest line of PvP. Currently, there are no party features, so fights are all versus all, which can lead to some unexpected and hilarious situations. I'm intrigued by the possibilities of PvP in this game, Will be limited to battle arenas, or will there be regions where players can fight each other to control areas, buildings, etc.? Will there be servers that are completely dedicated to PvP, like those in World of Warcraft? These questions have left me excited to discover what other amazing features this game has to offer. Ah, the joys of character customization! While it's not the top priority at this stage of the game's development, there's still plenty to be excited about. In fact, you can already transform the look of your avatar entirely by crafting unique armors and weapons. With a plethora of new sets available in Tier 1 and 2, the possibilities are endless. It's worth noting, however, that the 3D model of your avatar is still the same strapping red hair male from the pre-alpha. But fear not, as there's always the hope of a female 3D model in the future. Only time will tell when this feature will be implemented. In this alpha, I was thrilled to discover two formidable features that had been added to the game, PvP and quest lines. For the first time, players could embark on epic quests, complete them and progress through the quest line to conquer each boss. The sense of adventure was palpable as I immersed myself in five thrilling quest lines, only managing to finish three of them, but they were more than enough to get my adrenaline pumping. One of the quest lines that I successfully completed was the crafting expedition, where I had to craft numerous full sets of armors. It was a wonderful way to level up and learn the ins and outs of crafting. The bandit threat questline was another reverting adventure that required me to fight against a variety of enemies in numerous quests, culminating in the defeat of the nefarious boss Martis Lulkador. However, the most breathtaking questline was the treasure hen, where I had to seize the indigenous people of the deep forest, and ultimately defeat the awe-inspiring boss Steel Slice. It was such a formidable challenge that I had to call on all the players for assistance in slaying this magnificent beast. Also, leveling up was a breeze in this alpha version of the game, some rewards were not well balanced. However, this is to be expected in an early release, and I'm sure it will be rectified by the time of the public release. All of the skills were immediately available, and players only had to level them up through crafting or gathering, depending on the skill. The higher level skills are essential for crafting higher tiers, but this alpha still felt like an early version of what is yet to come. Completing quests was the best way to obtain weapons and equipment, Okay guys, it's time for me to give you my overall impressions of the game, which was in alpha state. As you know, alphas are like sketches or drafts, they are not the final version of the game, but they provide us with an idea of what the developers are working on. The beta will be more gameplay focused, giving us a better look and feel for what the final product will look like. It's not just a test for the game, but also for the game engine, which is developed in-house. Now, before I start drawing conclusions, I want to make it clear that I don't want to be harsh on the game. There are many aspects to consider, like graphics, sound and network stability, that may not be fully developed yet. However, compared to the pre-alpha version, I can say that I am very satisfied with the game's progress. The questline system, the new skills available, the addition of bosses to fight around the map, and new equipment and weapon tiers to craft and all exciting features that have been implemented. While network stability still needs to be proven with more users playing at the same time, it's important to remember that we had to wait in queue to join the game and start playing. The UI has been tweaked, but it still needs further updates and improvements. 
Unfortunately, the audio is one of the worst features at this moment, which the developers will need to address before they move on to the next beta stage. In their Discord general channel, it was shared that the next alpha is set to be released in August, and I, for one, am extremely excited to keep playing and testing this game. So stay tuned gamers, and let's see what the future holds for this game. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to tap on the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell to stay tuned for more videos. See you next time!